All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another collaboration beer. This time between Jack's Abbey Craft Lagers, and they're out of Framingham, Massachusetts, and Weihenstefana, and they're out of Bavaria, Germany. And this is their Fest of Both Worlds, the 2023 release. So this is a Fest beer style Oktoberfest that comes in at 6% alcohol by volume, no IBUs list in time of review. This can is approximately two months old. So we have a collaboration here between my introduction into lager only breweries here in the US and the oldest continuously operating a brewery in the world in Weihenstefan. And they have a spiel here on the back. It says decoction mashed. It also says horizontally lagered. It says what happens when the oldest brewery in the world and a modern American lager brewery collaborate on a fest beer lager? You get the fest of both worlds. This fest lager taps the technical, historical, and perfected brewing process of Weihenstefan and, and it blends with um, our boundary pushing techniques. Old World meets the new in every sip. Pros, naturally carbonated. They're also brewing this one with Pilsner and Munich malts, and then Sterling and Adina hops. So really excited about this one. Heard nothing but good things about it. So I needed to pick this one up. When I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is this is what we're going. This is what we're going with. We got we got to get it done. So yeah, this is going to be lighter, look like a fast beer as opposed to your darker Ameritsons. Um, and I'm here for it. So already out to a good start, looking beautiful. Do something like that, throw this over here and we will take a look at it. So yeah, beautiful clarity, definitely looks like a fast beer. Has this, you know, nice yellow golden color clarity through the roof, decent carbonation, just over a finger of this soap sudsy looking head, but it looks beautiful for what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, that is an awesome looking fast beer. Let's get a nose. Whew, yeah. Oh man, so has, that it's not like over the top with richness when it comes to the malt character, but it does have a complex malt character. It has a nice breadiness to it, like a like a slightly toasted bread quality. A little bit of a uh, slight biscuit note, touch of honey, but then you get the hops, and the hops aren't overbearing, but they're noticeable. It has a more of like an herbal kind of hop uh, nose, a touch of a spiciness. Just smells, you get that, and I know uh, some fellow beer tubers uh, say the same thing, but like a good friend of mine, fellow beer tuber, Kyle, over at No Hype Beer Reviews, he'll say, what does he always say when it when it comes to, you get that slight funk, that that, that fermented kind of um, nose when you know you're drinking a lager, and that's kind of what you get here, like a that, that lager funk, so to speak. It's not like, you know, like a farmhouse or something like that, or like a wild there where you get like a barnyard, a barnyard, a barnyard, a funk. It just has that, you know, slight, slight lager funk. But it just, it just smells like, it almost, it's not like exactly akin to a Hellas, but kind of like it has that rich kind of um, malt profile that you would get from like a Hellas. It just smells like I want to crush the shit out of this. So I'm going to. Prokes to everybody. That is fantastic. and so clean too. Like, wow. And it has like a residual, you know, hop character that has a nice bitterness too. Oh man, this is really nice. Mm. So easy to drink. It's, it's light on its feet, yet it packs a punch in terms of flavor. Buying this lower side of medium, 6%, I'm fine with it. Makes it infinitely more drinkable. The um, mouthfeel, it has a little bit of like, it's smooth on the palate, but it's so crisp and clean. It's just incredibly easy to drink from a mouthfeel perspective. The taste, forefront, all that bulk goodness for me. It's biscuity, it's bready, it's toasted. Uh, it's basically a toasted white bread, uh, white bread, maybe a little bit of like a brown bread, maybe like a hybrid. There's a touch of like a like a honey sweetness I'm getting, very slight, um, not overbearing, but it's definitely there. As it passes through, I'm getting a little a touch of like a lemony kind of kick, but that quickly trans transitions into the the hop character, which follows the nose to a T. As an herbal and spicy kind of hop kick, this finishes um, mild to moderately bitter, more approaching moderately bitter. This is semi to full on dry, very well balanced. The, the malt goodness you get at the front, all that sweetness is kind of stopped in its tracks by the um, 
the 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 bitterness and the dryness kind of tag teaming and joining forces to kind of balance it out to um, a degree in which is highly enjoyable. It's 6%. I can tell it's a little bit bigger from, I don't know what it is, but I just, this, this doesn't drink like, sometimes I get like a, you get like a four and a half or 4.7% Hellas or something like that. You can tell this drinks like five and a half, six percent So it's not hiding the alcohol, but it's also, you can't really taste the alcohol per se. I could throw back a lot of these. I wish, I mean, I don't mind these 16 ounce cans, but I wish this was in a 12 ounce can or a 12 ounce bottle. I drink multiple of those, and I think the 12 ounce format would make it. I don't know. I, I just feel like crusher of beer should be in 12 ounce cans. I don't know. I have just something over the past you know year I've kind of started to think like yeah, I like that in a 12 ounce can. I don't know. Whatever. I could pound the crap out of this in a 16 ounce can too. Does it really matter? Not really. One more sip, and we're gonna rate it. The little lemony kind of kick at the front is kind of diving underneath the palate and hitting me on the back of the palate, mixing in with that hop uh, character, and it's really delightful. This is really nice. This is one of the better fest beers I've had, um, maybe ever. You don't get a lot of fest beers here in the U.S., like authentic fest beers, so the, it's cool that they collab to do this. A lot of times when you get a fest beer from an American brewery and it says fest beer Oktoberfest, it's usually a Meriton. You'll see it and it'll be like, suit, like compared to this, it will be like, it'll look like a caramel, you know, or bronze color. This this looks, you know, like, this looks like a fizzy yellow beer, maybe slightly darker, right? That's what a fest beer is supposed to be. And this is a fest beer. I'm really enjoying this one. So Fest of Both Worlds, the 2023 release from Jax Abbey and Vihen Stefana. I have no issues giving this one right here a high 4.25 out of 5 and go 4.35. Almost gets a low 4.5 range. This is just fantastic for what it is. I, I think this is a fantastic collaboration. I'm really digging this one and probably one of the best, if not the best, Fest beer uh, beers that I've had from an American brewery in maybe maybe ever. I was going to say in a hot minute. Maybe ever. I don't know. Uh Price point availability, I think those were where I shop, $14.99 a four-pack. I think I paid like $3.89 for that can all day, every day. Maybe three dollars No, it was like $3.69 all day, every day. Like That's a good price point for something of this quality, in my opinion. 16-ounce can, I'm fine with it. And um, what was the uh, availability on this? I don't know. Wherever Jack's Abbey is sold, I, I would imagine if you see Jack's Abbey, you probably should have saw this one here in the West New York area, Buffalo, New York area specifically. I saw it multiple locations. And yeah, it's just a really well-made Fest beer. If you're somebody who enjoys Fest beers over Meritons and you can get this one and give it a go. Although, you know, it's a little bit late now. We're, you know, heading into the middle of October. So I get it. But um, I am not disappointed whatsoever. I'm drinking this one right now. I'm actually pretty happy about it. So if you've had this one before, post comment section, like I said, 6%. You kind of know it's like a slightly bigger Oktoberfest beer of some sort, but it's not like too big. It's just, I if I was doing this blind, I'd guess probably like 5.7, 5.8, so I wouldn't be that far off. Um, just something about it is a little bit more heft overall as a whole. So yeah, if you've had this one before, I really want to hear from you. I'd be curious to see uh, how many people have had this uh, that watch the channel. I know that Jack's Abbey released their Munich, um, their, was their Munich style fest beer. I didn't pick that one up because I didn't want to get two from Jack's Abbey when I'm only reviewing five Oktoberfest this year. So I just grabbed this one because of the collaboration. And I'm probably assuming I didn't make the wrong choice. I don't know. Anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review. Here on the Beer Patrol, to the next one. Prost.